Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We're going to get started in a few minutes as people are signing up at a pretty good pace. So please stay tuned. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. For those of you who, have, uh, who are just joining, we're just waiting for more people to log in since it's exactly the hour now. Uh, so please give us a few minutes to let people log in, join the webinar before we get started. Uh, we'll get started no later than three minutes past the hour. Thank you for joining us. This is a webinar uh, reviewing options strategies and secrets of the Ava Options web trader. I'll show you shortly how to access the web trader, how to navigate around it and some of the main features before we get into the uh, what we call web trader secrets, uh, which is how to use the web trader and how to use options strategies to set up a portfolio to set up a trade that maximizes the returns that you can get from your view. So again, bear with us just a few minutes while we let more people Log in. Hi folks, just another one minute and we're gonna get started on this webinar. My name is Steven Ryder. I'm responsible for this uh, uh, project, the AVA Options Web Trader, and in fact, the whole AVA Options platform. We're going to uh, be discussing our web trader and how to use it to maximize returns from your view. So we're gonna get started in just another minute. Uh, bear with us as more people are logging in uh, by the second. Thanks very much. Just another another minute. You can see uh, my face. This uh, the camera is on, but uh, once we begin the webinar, I'm going to turn it off. So just for the benefit of those of you who have signed in on time, you get to see what I actually look like. After this, you're only going to hear my voice. One more sec. All right. 
So I want to first show you how to log in and how to access the web trader because uh, there are some users who may not be aware, uh, which is perfectly understandable since we have various uh, user interfaces at Avatrade. I'm just going to kill off this web trader now, web view. Kill that. Kill that. All right. Uh, so I'm going to let's pop up to the. ABBA Trade homepage. This is the ABBA Trade homepage. You go to abbatrade.com or abbatrade.co.it or whatever your local uh, uh, URL is for accessing ABBA Trade. And if you click on login, and put in your credentials. I've got an account here with this email address and I'm going to click login. And if you're a trader that has an AVA web trader account, which is based on MT4 or MT5. If you have an AVA web trader account, you're going to get automatically logged into the web trader. This is not the AVA options web trader. In order to get to your AVA options account, you've got to go back to what's called the My Accounts menu. So right from the hamburger at the top left, I'll go to My Accounts. And now you'll see that this account that was set up has both a web trader which is actually an MT4 account atop this number, 74146756, but it also has an AVA options account, server AVA options. The AVA options account has four different interfaces. There's a downloadable interface, which is Windows, a Windows platform, which I do not recommend. It's uh, old school, it's a lot of numbers, and it's a bit harder to understand. It has application specifically to money managers who are going to trade multiple accounts at once. Otherwise, your choices are Google Play or the App Store to use our excellent mobile apps or web trading, which is the web trader we're going to use today. I simply click on web trading and I will automatically launch the AVA Options web trader. It's automatically going to log you in and this is the web trader. So that's how you access the web trader. I'm actually going to, going to switch to a different account because this one has cash and trades in it. So this is the AVA Options Web Trader. The AVA Options Web Trader is entirely HTML based. It is responsive on your screen. So depending on what type of a PC you're using, laptop, depending on the size of your screen, uh, you'll see windows uh, closing and opening, or you'll be able to uh, reorganize the screen to maximize the amount of screen real estate that you have or the amount of screen real estate you can use. On the left side, uh, you're seeing I've got a very full monitor here. On the left side, we've got the assets. Uh, they're organized at the top of you know, the main currencies, then it's got equity indices, uh, and that's followed by all the miners and the emerging markets currencies. I can look at specific groups such as all or favorites or majors or metals. If I click indices, for example, I get just the indices. I have a list of favorites. I have no favorites set up on this account, so let's create some. I'll go back to FX majors. I'm gonna make Euro dollar, Aussie, cable, and dollar yen part of my favorites by clicking these star toggles. And now when I go to favorites, there they are. Let's add more favorites. Let's add the equity indices. Let's choose uh, the US 500 and the US, and let's say the FTSE. And let's add some miners. Let's add, I don't know, Euro Sterling, which either crosses or miners, whatever you want to call them. Sterling CAD. Uh, let's make sure we add gold actually under metals. Let's add gold. Gold is very popular, especially for options. And in EM, uh, let's add, I don't know, dollars R. Okay, so now when I go to favorites, I have a nice list of assets that I'm typically trading. And now we get into the main screen. So let me give you a quick review in case you haven't used this web trader or if you've not used our mobile app. This screen has very much the same UI or the same look and feel as our mobile apps, but you have more screen real estate and additional features here in the web trader. Uh, by the way, I am watching uh, for questions. If anybody's typing in questions and things, I will 
be sure to address them throughout the webinar. Uh, in the middle of the screen, what you see to, right now is Aussie dollar at the top of the page. Aussie dollar is the asset that we're seeing a chart for. That's what we've selected by default when we first log into the web trader. We're looking at a spot trade, which means FX. We're just trading Aussie dollar just as if we were using uh, MT4 or MT5 or any other platform. So this is looking at buying or selling Aussie dollar. We have a chart based on one minute candles. I can choose five minute candles. I can choose 10 seconds, whatever you like. And I can expand and contract and zoom in and zoom out and do all the things that you'd like to be able to do like that. We have indicators. So you can add your favorite Bollinger Bands or you can draw, use drawing tools and add a trend line, something like this. Let's make it in uh, purple. I can add a trend line, maybe like that. And as I move my screen around, that trend line will move with me. And what's unique on our screen is really out, begins on the right side of the page. On the right side of the page, you see this red and green diagram. The red and green diagram, diagram is our profit and loss chart. It shows that if we buy Aussie dollar and the market goes up, we're going to make money. If it goes down, we're going to lose money. It's showing the P&L in terms of price. So if you buy at 70.41 and we go up to 70.48, we're going to be making seven pips. But I can also change this chart to show us our P&L in dollar terms, since this is a dollar account, or an Aussie term, since it's trading Aussie dollar whatever way you'd like to see it, I tend to show it in dollars, which is my uh, account value. So as the market goes up, I'm gonna be making money. As it goes down, I'll lose money. If I do a larger trade, then of course the PNL numbers all get bigger. If I do a smaller trade, then the numbers are small. So I can see that the market goes up, I'm gonna make money, market goes down, I'm gonna lose money. If I go short the market, then I'm gonna profit if the market goes down and I'll be losing if the market goes up. And then just to complete the platform, to compare it to a uh, trading spot on others, we can add a take profit just by clicking on these limit lines. This is our closing limit arc. I can set my exact price. I can put in a stop loss at 70.30, and I can put in a take profit at 70.50. I can put my take profit as good until the end of the week, and I might put my stop loss and make it good until the end of the day. So now you've got a good visual representation of the trade. I'm buying Aussie dollar if I execute. I'm adding a conditional closing order, which is a take profit at 70.50 and a stop loss at 70.30. I click buy, it tells me how much margin I have available, how much margin additional is needed for this trade, based on span or risk-based margining. The cost of this trade is showing me my overnight interest costs per day and the bid offer spread in dollar terms as this is again a dollar account. Click execute, trade is done. And you see it right there at the top of our open trades. You can see there's a new Aussie dollar position. We bought cash 200,000, filled at 0.70395, it has, uh, you, 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 everything is marked to market on a closing basis. So we have a slight loss, which is our bid ask spread. And the net delta, of course, the delta of a spot position is one. So your net delta is also 200,000. And in blue, cool, waiting to be executed, we have both a stop loss and a take profit. And the take profit is a limit order. Limit order GTW, good for the week. Stop loss, good until the end of the day. Now let's talk about what this platform really is all about, options. Instead of trading spot, I click here where it says the word spot and we can trade options. Options meaning calls or puts or combinations of calls and puts, which are strategies. Strategies are call spreads, put spreads, strangles, strangles, risk reversals. And I'm gonna show you what those are in a moment. But first, let's give a quick view of what an option looks like in this platform. We have a whole bunch of other webinars that you can review and uh, other tutorials on the web. So if this uh, class or if this uh, discussion is too advanced, just go into the menu on the left side, 
click video tutorials. And here you'll see, this is the main uh, introduction to our platform, but here you have a playlist. In this playlist, you can see the previous webinars and other guides to understand how to use this platform. We've got introduction to options, which teaches you all about options and how they're valued and what drives the price of an option. Uh, we have webinars talking about the mobile app, about the web trader, about uh, Greeks like Delta and Gamma and Theta and what they mean. You can just go right in there and use them. Click trade to get right back to where we were. I'm just gonna clear out this drawing tool like that. And I'll clear out our Bollinger Bands like that. So what do we have now? Now we're looking at a call option. We have to set first the expiration date of the option. The expiration date of our option right now is seven days, the 13th of December. I can switch this to be a two month option or I can choose any day in between. Any date that has a blue dot is a date that you can choose as expiration. As long as your trade size is at least 100,000 or 10 lots, you can choose any expiration date from one day to one year, any business day that is. If your tra trade size is smaller, then you can only trade some standardized dates such as uh, overnight, two-day options, options that expire on any of the next six Thursdays and the third Friday of each month and a few other days that are in blue. But if your trade size is at least 100,000, then you can trade any date you like. So let's say we're gonna do a two month option, click apply. We're seeing on the left side, two months of history. This is two months of history of the Australian dollar against the US dollar. You notice that there's a strong trend down. In the center of the screen, we have this new area. This is our confidence range. Based on the volatility that we see in the market and based on the time to expiration, which is two months, we calculate a range that's fair, that's representative of the risk of this trade. We're showing you an arc in the center, which represents plus and minus one standard deviation of movement based on, again, volatility of the asset and the time. After that, you see plus and minus two standard deviations. And by default, we set the range of the y-axis here to plus and minus two standard deviations. And then outside of that, you see plus and minus three standard deviations. And we can say that we're, uh, I believe it's 68% confident that the market is going to finish within one standard deviation up or down. We can say that we are 97% confident that the market is going to finish within two standard deviations up and down. So that's really our, our key, which is to, to frame the risk for you. And then on the right side, sorry, in, in let's just close off the limit section. Uh, in the profit and loss chart, you'll notice now that instead of having symmetric PL, you now have asymmetric PL. What does that mean? It means that on one side, the most you can lose is fixed. You're buying an option. You're paying, in this case, $1,182 to buy this call option. That's the most you can lose. However, if the market goes up, you have unlimited profit potential. That's a call option, buying a call option. Now, based on the history or the trend of this market, which is cl clearly showing a downtrend, let's add this trend line. I'll do it again in purple, make it a little bigger. I'm gonna draw this trend line looks like the market's really got a good, steady trend downwards. So if I like the trend, and remember the trend is your friend, then I'm more interested in a bearish trade, not a bullish trade. I have a couple of different tr strategies, or actually many strategies that I can use if I believe that Aussie dollar will continue to fall. One thing I can do is I can sell this call option. If I sell this call option and the market continues to trend lower, or basically stays where it is or heads lower, this option, the call option, will finish out of the money and I'll earn this premium. Two months from now, the option will expire worthless and I'll keep $1,100. Alternatively, I can change the strike of the option and be a little bit more adventurous. If I believe that this trend line is really going to be fulfilled all the way to expiration, I might sell a, in, an in the money call option. I might sell a call option with a strike of 69. 
which means that I'm giving up the right to someone else to buy from me Aussie dollar at 0.69, which is cheaper than it's trading today. But in return, I'm getting paid more money. I'm getting paid two points for that option. So my break even is going to be two points uh, below the strike. I'm not going to lose unless the market finishes two points above 0 0.69 because I'm earning two points. We're trading at 0 0.69. Sorry, the, the strike is 0 0.69. So if spot finishes above 0 0.71, right about here, that's when I'm going to start to get into trouble. You can see the break even on the profit and loss chart where the where the option uh, PL goes from zero to one. Okay. Um, let me just pause for a moment and just show you, since you're opening a new account, how you would make a deposit, how you would, um, and how you would, uh, let's see, let's go back into, no, wrong way. Bear with me. Okay. F11, let's go back into this account. The real account that I have, if I click on this menu, I can click deposit. I can also upload documents. This probably is going to tell me that I'm missing documents and I need to upload documents. So we click upload documents so that my account gets verified and then I can upload, make a deposit after that. I can see personal details. I can upload documents. All of the standard features are available here. And the documents required will depend on your regulation where you are. These are my personal details. I can withdraw funds, but of course there are no funds to withdraw. So I'll get a message saying, you have no funds to withdraw, go deposit. Go deposit, it tells you upload documents. Everything works uh, as it should. So you've got a nice funded account like this one, and you can start to trade. So as I said, let's sell a call that's deep in the money. I click sell, tells me how much margin I need, et cetera. Click execute. That trade is done, and now we have a short call position. So this is also a bearish trade. So the first trade that I did in Aussie Cash, we bought cash. That's bullish. If I click this trade in the, from the open positions window, I can see the position. This is the position that we created. I'm profitable if the market goes up, and I'm going to lose money if the market goes down. But combine that with the Tra second trade we did, which was to sell a call, and if you put them together, you get this PL. Uh, they have different sizes. It's a little bit confusing because I did the trades in different sizes, but you can see now uh, I still have a bearish trade because on the downside, on the call that I sold, the most I can earn is fixed. The most I can earn is the premium that I uh, earned up front. But if I compare that to the spot trade, I have unlimited loss potential which is going to dominate uh, this trade. Million dollars. So let's not focus on that. Let's go back to where we were. This is the trade that I just did. Selling a call option. I got ahead of myself here. There it is. That's the, the option that we sold. At expiration, if we get all the way to expiration and the market is at or below the strike, I'm gonna keep my $2,068. Today, the profit and loss is based on this orange line. The orange line is showing us our profit and loss today. So we're sitting right now at the market today, trading at 70.39. The orange line is near zero because I have no PL. I just have a small loss, which is the bid ask spread or the small movement we've had since I executed the trade. If the market starts to go higher, I'm going to start to lose money because I basically have a bearish trade on, not a bullish trade. So the market starts going higher, I'm going to start to lose money. If the market goes lower, I'm going to start to earn money. But the most I can earn is the premium that I earned up front. So that's why this orange line is sloping towards our maximum profit and sloping towards our maximum loss. And as time goes by, that orange line is going to creep up towards the expiration PL. That's time decay. Sitting where we are today, as the market starts to fade, I'm going to get closer and closer to earning my premium. Sorry, as time fades, as time passes. So that's a call option. I said we're going to talk today about secrets and strategies.
So first of all, the first secret I want to show you is our risk manager tool. Our risk manager is telling us the net exposure of all of our positions. It's a very powerful tool to see at a glance where the risk is in your portfolio. So at the bottom of the page in numbers, you can see in Aussie dollar that I've got five positions. My total delta is 114,000. That's my net exposure to the market. I have bought cash. That's the first trade we did, which is, means I'm long 200,000. And I've sold options, which give me today a net delta of 85,000. It's not the full delta of the option. It's in the money. It's not 100,000, but it's less than 100,000. Let's look at the positions. If I click Aussie dollar, when I go to open positions, it will highlight my Aussie positions. It looks like I've got here, we can filter, just filter it like this. I'll choose Aussie dollar. We've got three positions. We've sold a call on 100,000. We bought cash just now on 200,000. And we also sold calls on another 100,000. That, that's the trade that we did a while ago. So all of these positions are shown together in the chart above. This is showing us our open positions. Net net, because I've got three different positions on, I've bought cash and I've sold calls. I actually have a bullish trade on. If I simply looked at selling a call on its own without the cash, then I would have that bearish trade on. By adding the cash position, the cash position dominates because it's larger. See the difference? So if I really wanted to be bearish, I would simply close out this position, the spot trade that I executed, executed, click execute, it's now gone. And I'm left with two positions, two Aussie positions. And now I have two sold calls, which is clearly a bearish trade. As the market trends lower, we're going to earn our premium over time. Now that's just selling calls. And I'm showing you in our risk manager what our net risk looks like. In Aussie, you can see that we're short Aussie net net because we've sold options. I have big positions on it looks like in the 30, the Dow 30, we call it the US 30. I'm that long in sterling, I'm long in gold, I'm long in euros. I can see my delta by currency and I can see it by currency pair. So there's Aussie dollar I'm short, which means I'm short Aussie and long dollar. Cable which is sterling against the dollar on long, which means I'm long sterling, short dollars, long gold, short dollars, long euros, short dollars. When you break it down to the currencies, we're short dollars. So that's the overall position that I've got. Now let's look at some other strategies because that's what I said we're gonna talk about. Let's go back here. Let's choose Euro dollar. Now, instead of trading a call, we have lots of other strategies. So let's talk about these strategies. A call spread, a call is a bullish trade. If you buy a call, it's bullish. But suppose you're only mildly bullish and you don't think the market's really going to go that much higher. You're paying for all of this upside, but you actually think that the market's going to go lower. Sorry, you, you think the market's bullish, going to go higher, but you don't really want to spend this much for the option. There are various ways you could reduce the cost of your option. One way to reduce the cost of your option is to make the strike further away. You see when I set the strike higher, this is a one week option. Let's go back to that two month option. If I set the strike of my call higher, the option is cheaper. This option on 100,000 euro dollar costs me $278 or 27.8 pips. So two months from now, the right to buy euros at 116 and a quarter which is more than 3% higher than the current market, but still very much possible, that only costs $275. But the right to buy at the current market level costs five, four times as much, $1,300. So we can reduce the cost of our option by making it further out of the money. But suppose that doesn't match your view. Your view is mildly bullish. You think the market's going higher, you just don't know it's gonna get that much higher. And you don't want to lose money if the market only goes a little bit higher. Let's look at a different strategy. Let's look at a call spread. A call spread involves buying one call and selling another call. You buy this deep in the money call and you sell the out of the money call. 
Now you see your profitability is more balanced. You have limited downside, but you also have limited upside. This fits your view because you don't really think the market's going to go sky high. You're bullish. You're mildly bullish. You think it's going to stay here and move a bit higher. This is a great way to put on a trade with very low risk and indeed net net very little cost. If you put this trade on and the market doesn't go anywhere, we finish right here, your CAPL is roughly zero. There's no carry, there's no overnight interest on options. If I click to buy, you see that there is no overnight interest because options don't have overnight interest. I have available margin, how much margin additional is needed and what my bid ask spread is. I can move my strikes and change that risk and reward profile. So I can decide to take a little more risk, have more downside risk or less downside risk. I can trade them back and forth and I can do the same exact strategy a little bit differently with a put spread. A call spread is this one, buying deep in the money and selling an out of the money call. For more information, click the word guide, call spread. It explains the trade. It's a low risk trade for moderate moves bullish move moderately bullish buy one call sell a higher strike call limited risk limited reward very little exposure to to volatility changes and very flexible but another way we can do this is called a put spread let's go back here we can do a put spread if we sell a put spread it has the same risk reward profile click try it with a put spread, we do a little bit differently. We're going to buy an out of the money put and sell an in the money put. The difference is that you receive a credit up front. When you sell a put spread, you receive a credit up front. When you buy a call spread, you have to pay up front. So you need more cash. You have to have a cash balance in your account. You always need a cash balance to cover your margin. But a lot of traders will use a put spread to express the same view. So here's a put spread, same kind of exposure. I can even make it purely bullish by setting this strike at the money and selling this strike out of the money. We can do the same thing again with a call spread. I'm gonna buy a call spread, try it. I'm gonna buy the at the money call, right? I'll buy a 113 call and I'll sell a 116 call. And you see that I have more upside than downside because I am bullish. But if the market doesn't go anywhere, I am going to lose some money because I'm buying this at the money option. This is a great, simple trade, low risk, easy to execute. I click buy, execute, done. Nice and quick. This risk uh, profile will update. And if I go in here in my open positions, I've got this uh, filtered here. Let's get rid of the filter, clear. There's the trade we just did. We bought a call and we sold a call. They'll get marked to market individually, but we did it as a strategy. If I choose them both, you can see our position on the, uh, on the horizon line. You can see where our call is and where is I put relative to the current market. Do we have other Euro dollar positions in our portfolio? We do. We got three other positions. If I choose them all. We can see all of them together to see what our net exposure looks like. And we got a bit of a smorgasbord of options trades because I'm just playing around here. But I can close out any of these trades and I can uh, see also how everything evolves over time. So we've got an interesting strategy here. I am watching for questions so far. Nobody's asked a question. I'm going to clear all this out and go back to square one. By the way, uh, you can take this section at the bottom with open positions and the risk manager and history of, uh, of trades and closed trades. We can take this whole thing and pop it out like this by clicking the pop out button. So if you have two screens, you might move it off to another screen. It's very handy and I can resize it and keep it up in front of me so I can keep an eye on my risk manager as I'm doing other things. Just keep it over here on the side. Keep an eye on my portfolio. Pretty neat. If I close this window, it pops right back into the trading platform.
We also have gold. Let's look at a gold trade. Let's look at another strategy. Let's look at a simple strategy, which is a straddle. A straddle is buying a call and buying a put. I'm gonna click on the guide, straddle. With a straddle, you buy a call and a put at the same strike. You can do this with one strategy. If you do this, you're buying options, which means you're buying exposure to a big move in either direction. So you're paying for exposure to a move higher or a move lower, or for the more advanced traders, you're betting or you are taking the view that volatility is going to be higher than that which was implied in the prices of these options. You think the market's gonna get more volatile because of something that's going on in the markets. So you think implied volatility is too cheap, you think there is some impending announcement coming out that's going to have a big effect on the market, whatever it is, you're paying for both sides of the market. That's expensive. Try it. What you see here is that you're gonna lose money in a pretty big range because you're taking the view or you're paying for exposure on both sides of the market. And in reality, at the end of the day, you can only get, you can only finish higher or where we are today or lower. You can't finish in two different places. So you're paying for two options, but only one of them has the possibility of paying off. This is why it's a popular strategy to sell straddles. But sell a straddle, you're taking a simpler view that the market's not going anywhere. It's gonna stay right here. And as time goes by, you're going to earn decay and you're going to earn the premium that you've that you've taken up front and keep it. This is just a one week option. Let's do it a much longer option. So this is a 60 day, 60 day option. With this 60 day option, you're going to be taking in, if you do an option on 100 ounces of gold, you're going to be taking in, you can see it here as well, $8,500 for this risk. And as time goes by, you're going to slowly, slowly earn that if the market stays where it is. And at expiration, if the market stays at the strike of 1780, both of those options will expire out of the money and you'll keep the funds. You'll keep all of that premium. When you're buying the option, on the other hand, that's going to cost you all that. So how do you make this kind of a trade cheaper? Well, one thing you can do is just trade one side of it, like buying a call. Another thing you can do is a strangle. With a strangle, it's a similar kind of an idea, but instead of buying a call and a put at one strike, you can buy them at different strikes. I'm gonna set my call strike somewhere and I'm gonna set my put strike somewhere. Because maybe your view of the market isn't that we're going to finish right around the current market, but maybe you think we're gonna trend lower and you wanna do something like this. You can move your strikes wherever you like. And similarly, you can sell a strangle. That lets you define the range that you think will keep the market bound. So just looking at this historical chart, if I do, if I look at a three month option, you can see the price of gold, is only moving around within this band, within this range. I'll set my strikes for the put at the lower end of the band. I'll set my strike for the call at the higher end of the range. And I'll sell my strangle like that. So if you think this, we're going to continue to be range bound, you're going to earn $5,000 up front, which means your break even is going to be $5,000 higher than the high strike or lower than the low strike, or putting it in terms of the options themselves, you're earning $51. So your break-even on the upside is going to be the high strike, $18.60 plus $51. Your break-even is going to be $19.11, which you can see right here, $19.11. That's your break-even on the upside. Your break-even on the downside is going to be the low strike, $17.20 minus $51, which is $16.69. You can see that right here. In fact, I can, well, never mind. Uh, so you can set your strikes according to the range of the market. If you want to get some ideas about the range of the market, here's another great feature of our platform. See the number three in a circle next to this red line next to gold. That is 
the signal or the pattern recognition software called AutoChartist. I'll click the word three, and we're going to get a uh, summary of the signals that have been generated by AutoChartist based on the price history. And looking at a four hour chart, so four hour candles, they've identified a strategy or a pattern called a falling wedge, which is bullish. It's got a certain quality and trend and clarity. It's not a, a, a particular, there's no breakout of, of note. Uh, it's not the highest quality signal, but it seems apparently very clear. Let's click it and see what it tells us. This is a chart showing us a four hour chart, a four hour uh, candles going back to uh, the middle of November. And it says that we're in this wedge and that we're just now breaking out of the wedge and they see that as a bullish signal. And you can see since this signal was identified, the market has stayed a bit higher, but it hasn't hit its target of 1802. This is suggesting that you execute a bullish trade with a take profit at 1802 and a stop loss at 1761. If you agree with this and you can learn more about the strategy and things, what do these signals mean? Just click here and it'll tell you more about what all these things mean. If you like the trade, click trade and it'll set it up in our platform like this with the take profit and stop loss ready to execute. Let's do that again. Uh, here, trade, there it is. So now you can see the wedge that they've identified and they believe that the market's going to head higher, so they but they put it in with a take profit and a stop loss. So if you like that trade, you go ahead and execute it. That's done, and there it is in the bottom. Bought cash, we bought 100 ounces of gold, the take profit and a stop loss. Now you can use that same signal, that same information, to inform your view using options. So again, if I look at this and I'm bullish, and they're putting in a take profit and a stop loss. A stop loss is 1761, a take profit at 1802. Instead of trading spot, since it's bullish, I might buy a call. Right? They had a bullish trade with a stop loss. I also can use what's called a risk reversal. Now, a risk reversal is very cool. A risk reversal says buy a call and sell a put to pay for it. So you can set up a zero cost, uh, zero cost strategy with a call and a put like this. So here's gold. Let's look at two months. Uh, no, let's look at gold for the next two weeks. We've got a bullish strategy. I'm going to buy a call. I'm going to pay for it by selling a put. So here's what I've done. I bought a call. I'm looking at buying a call at 18.05. And I'm going to sell a put at 1765. So if the market finishes between those two levels, whoops, sorry, that was the wrong key. I just changed the expiration. I'm looking at two weeks. I'm going to set up a zero cost risk reversal like this. There it is. That's calling us, costing us basically nothing. I'll just expand this so you can see it better. Uh, grab the screen. All right, that's not working. Uh, so I'm looking at buying a call. There's the horizon line. I'm buying a call at 1810. I'm selling a put at 1760. So I have unlimited downside potential if the market drops below 1760. I have unlimited upside potential above 1810. So if the market is blah, just stays in this range of 1760 to 1810, nothing happens. I'm not going to make or lose any money. I'm earning a dollar um, per ounce. If I look at this in dollar terms and I do the trade on 100 ounces, I'm earning $120. If the market, however, moves higher, I have unlimited profit potential. If it moves lower, I have lost potential. There's no overnight carry, just two legs to this trade. Today, it looks like this on the orange line. As the market moves higher, it looks more or less like a spot trade. But over time, as I said, you've got no exposure between this range, within this range, and you're only going to make money as the market moves higher. So what I'm going to do is execute this trade. I'll do it on 200 ounces. Execute. You notice, again, there's no carry. The trade is done already. You can see it in here. Wait, didn't see it there yet. 
So there it is. I bought a call and I sold a put. And now let's take this put and let's add a stop loss to it. Because let's say I am concerned about something happening and gold starts cratering because it's a very technical asset. If I open this position in my window to close the trade, I can either close the trade, I can do a partial close of the trade like that by changing the size of it, but I also can add a limit order. And I'm going to add a limit order to close this trade at a stop loss of, let's say, $30. I don't want to lose more than $30 on this thing. Let's put in a stop loss at 30, not, not losing more than 30. That means if the option price drops below 30, so I have to buy it back. So if the option price moves higher than 30, get me out, close me out of the trade. Stop loss on the price of the option. I put this trade on, I earned, you see at the bottom of the page, I earned $13 per ounce. And I'm gonna put a stop loss at $30 per ounce. Execute, that's done. And now you see there's a stop loss in blue attached to the put. Any questions? I speak rather quickly, I apologize. This webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to go and listen to me all over again. We're not gonna keep going for much longer because I like to keep my webinars down below 45 minutes. But you see how we've added a stop loss on an option position? You can use, and you can see other videos that explain that over time, in order to get $30 back for this option, or in order for this option to cost $30, spot has to be at different places over time because of time decay. This is just a very unique and very cool feature for advanced users to play around with. I'm gonna close this, and you can see in our risk manager now, we've got more gold positions. If I Click on gold right here. It puts all of our gold positions into the screen like that. Or if I go look at my open positions and just filter for gold, easy enough to see them. And if I just look at the trade I just put on, it does not include stop losses in the picture. It just includes that trade that we put on. We bought a call and we sold a put but you can also see that I've got other positions here. On some other day, it looks like I bought a call in 1930 and I sold to put it 1815 with different, uh, let's see if the 1930 isn't even on the screen. There it is all the way up there. Market was at a very different level at the time. If you wanna know where the market was at the time, let's get it back on the screen. Want to know where the market was at the time you can look over here on the right side of the screen the four positions that i've chosen are listed on the right we've got the 1810 call the 1760 put those are the trades we just did and then we have this other trade which is executed on the uh on the third uh, on the 11th of november at the time gold was trading at 1862. So the middle of the range back then was 1862, which you see is between these two expirations. The expirations of those two options was the 13th of December, and the new trades have an expiration date of the 20th of December. So you see everything on one screen. Okay, pretty neat. There you see them all. So this is a very unique and powerful platform. As time goes by, you can see what happens. And again, I can do partial closes if the sizes of the trades are the same. So I could take these older trades only here. Uh, sorry, this is the newer trades. Let's take the older trades. No, let's, let's reduce the size of the new trades. Instead of being in 200, let's take them down to 50 like the others. So let's just close out 150 out of 200. Execute. I'm doing a partial close. That's done. So you see now, this position hasn't updated yet. Let me just do this. There it is. In gold, filter for gold. We now have these options 
50 and these options for 50. Let's look only at our calls and puts. So these four trades, one, two, three, four. Four options trades. So it's showing us the cash trade too. I don't want to see the cash trade. Clear. There's our four options trades like that. And you see what it looks like as time goes by. So once again, a little recap of what we've discussed. You've got the risk manager, which shows you your overall exposures. You've got the strategy guide, which tells you what these various strategies are. And please study to learn more about butterflies and seagulls, all the different ways you can tailor your exposure. So you choose the pieces, you choose the building blocks for a strategy, and then you monitor, you change the strikes, you change the time or the expiration date to match your view. And we have this auto chartist feature. You can also see it on the side menu, I think. No, not on the side menu. These numbers, if you want to know what does auto chartist see in dollar yen, what signals does it pick up from the chart patterns? In the 15 minute channel, it's got this channel up in dollar yen. You see very clearly what it's trying to tell you. And what it's trying to do is a bullish trade in dollar yen. Different patterns, though, or different candles might give you a different signal. The highest quality signal we have here is bullish on the one hour and 30 minute chart, ABCD. Let's look at uh, equities like the US 500. US 500, we've got a, at two o'clock today, a bullish signal was recognized based on the 30 minute chart. That's a triangle. I don't know, could break out either way if you ask me. You make your own judgment. And here, based on this triangle, it's bearish. So you look at these things and decide what you think is the, is the right direction for the market, and then create your ideal strategy around that. That's Auto Chartist. I think it's an excellent tool. It's available in the mobile app and in the uh, web trader, only available to real accounts. I'm being asked, is it possible to set a take profit order in spot against the option rather than just close off the position? So the answer is for an option, you can, you can put a take, take profit order using spot, of course, meaning you can put in a, a spot trade in addition to your option trade, or you can put in a take profit or a stop loss on the price of an option. For an option, you cannot set the take profit or stop loss based on the spot price. It's based on the option price. We cannot accept orders based on the spot price because we don't know the exact option price at that time. We do have an idea, and you can see it here based on, here's euro dollar. I'll look at a call option. And let's say it's uh, for a month. Well, let's go for two months. And I want to put in a take profit. So right now this option costs 157 pips. I want to, I want to put in a take profit when the market is trading around, let's do this, 116.86. When the market's trading around 116.86, looks like that, I'm going to take, put in a take profit. So I can put in a take profit based on the option price. So I can put in an option price of 460 pips. I'm buying the option for 150. I'm putting in a take profit three times higher. Where is that going to happen? Well, if the market moves higher today, that's going to happen around 116.90. You see when I move my cursor to the take profit line in the crosshairs, I can see right in the middle of the page I can, where my cursor is, I can see 116.90 roughly. This 116.90 level is based on the current bid-ask spread, the current implied volatility, and the market moving today. As time goes by, the option is going to have less and less time value. Remember, you're buying an option, you're buying time value. So as time goes by, the market has to move higher to reach that same value, right? It's got to be more in the money because there's no time value left. So that's why we set the take profit 
in option price terms, and then the chart will show you roughly where the market needs to be on the horizon date to achieve that level. Very cool feature. It works on the stop loss as well. In order to get any value for an option that you've bought, at expiration, it has to be in the money. So as I move to the right, as time goes by, to get anything back on that stop loss, we've got to move in the money. See, we moved above the strike in order to get back 93 pips. Right? Because the option is worthless at expiration if it's out of the money. So if you put in a stop loss, as time goes by, the market's got to get higher and higher to get that value back. Very cool feature. Any other questions? I am being asked if you can close an option at any time. The answer is yes. You can close options any time. You don't need to exercise an option before expiration. You cannot exercise an option. We only trade American style, uh, sorry, we only trade European style options here, which is the standard for the FX and OTC markets. So if you buy an option and you want to close it, you just sell it back. If you sold an option and you want to close it, you just buy it back. As I showed you, you just come into your open positions grab the position, click execute, and it's closed. Simple as that. And after you've closed it, you'll see it in the history. We closed 50, the last 50 out of the 150. And you can see in your closed trades report, all of the trades we've closed today, or you can look at a closed trade report for the last week or the last month or whatever period you wanna look for. It's all here and you can pop it out and, and uh, print it and do whatever else you like. Okay, that's it. We're basically out of time. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. I hope you uh, like the platform. Please use the web trader, use the mobile apps, open a demo account if you haven't got one. If you're not comfortable with options, please do not trade if you're not comfortable or you don't understand what you're trading. And if you really want to dip your toe in the water with a real account and you're still unsure, start off by buying options or using strategies that have limited loss potential. Don't sell an option which has unlimited loss potential unless you understand it. And when I say unlimited loss potential, just one more point. Um, selling an option is not any more risky than trading spot FX. If I buy euro dollar, I have unlimited loss potential on the downside. If the market goes down, trading spot, I can lose as much money as I have in my account until I run out the position is closed. If you sell uh, a put, it's really the same kind of a risk. If I sell a put, I have unlimited loss potential as the market goes down. The difference is I don't have unlimited profit potential on the upside. The advantage of the option is that I earned premium up front. So even if the option finishes in the money and I lose a lot of money, at least I received some premium up front. But unless you understand it, don't sell options until you understand all of that. Trade responsibility responsibly. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll have this webinar up in the playlist by tomorrow afternoon. Again, just go over here to video tutorials and you can see the playlist. And the same thing goes for the mobile app. You can see the same videos in your mobile app. Thanks very much. Have a great day.